and those goods and services must do something for them. And in that sense, the connectivity between the managerial and the philosophical actually is reconcilable to me. And the debate, whilst a valid one and a valuable one, because it does force us to rethink elements of it, doesn't necessarily denigrate or deny the usefulness of the mix as a tool. What it does suggest is we maybe need to play around a little bit with the language. That's not a huge hurdle for intelligent sentient beings. The mix also, in respect of that playing with the language, isn't really a numbers game. So increasing the number of Ps is not, was not the solution. So if you think about it, four Ps became seven Ps, got bigger. Product price, promotion, place, process. So looking at the logistics. In many respects, if we look at the early literature on place, it incorporated process within that. Physical evidence, i.e. the environment in which the product of the service is sold and or is consumed. And again, we can now challenge that because of the emergence, the significant emergence of the digital realm. E-tailing, but also the digital realm in terms of brand engagement, of communication, of social networking. And people. And undoubtedly people are important within any business, within any marketing activity, within any engagement as well. But what that does is increase the list, and that's fine. But it doesn't necessarily solve the debate between the philosophy and the management. What really matters, I believe, is how we view the list, or maybe that we create a list, and maybe we need to tailor our own marketing mix for our own brands, for our own businesses, whatever they may be. So we actually need to stop seeing the philosophical and the management as distinctive entities, because they can add value to each other. Because I would argue that if we only look at marketing philosophically, then in reality it's business use, its applicability and its implementation will be reduced. Because we're looking at it in a conceptual way. Likewise, if we focus solely on the managerial, then we don't challenge it, we don't move it forward. We don't, as it were, increase the relevance, the role, the significance of marketing. The problem in many respects is that marketing has got bigger, but marketing managers haven't. Now by that I mean that the people who are practicing marketing, the generation before you, as it were, haven't necessarily adapted to the changes. So in that sense, that's where the reflection becomes important. That's where the, the debate is important, i.e. What, what does marketing need to be? But in essence, what does it need to be to help inform what it needs to do? And to shape what it needs to do? Because one's about thinking, and one's about action. So we should really look at these two dimensions as two sides of the same coin that they are connected, that they have, in many respects, shared value. Because both of them do think about the consumer and what it is that the consumer wants. They just express it in different ways. But they're not necessarily that far apart. Even better would be to look at marketing as a continuum. Whereby, if we think about the philosophy, hey, the consumer embeddedness is enacted through a management or a functional activity. So, working together, working in tandem with each other, we get probably closer to the full potential of what marketing could be and should be. And actually, by working together, by seeing them as connected, we probably get closer to what we would normally describe or define as the marketing philosophy itself. And I think this is an interesting development, in essence, because much of the literature takes this polar 
stance that it's one or the other and let's compare and contrast but actually maybe what we need to do I believe is stop comparing and contrasting we know where they differ and start exploring how we can work in harmony, work in tandem, work as a continuum and sometimes the philosophical side, the philosophical element rather, will be more dominant and sometimes the functional and the management element will be more dominant and if we think of it as a continuum then it allows marketing to move up and down that continuum or move along that continuum so it doesn't have to take one stance or the other but it can sit wherever the best blend of those two positions or those two stances are. Do remember that the marketing mix is a tool. It's not a dogma. It's not a belief system. And remember that tools are a relative construct. It's created at a time and in a place and in a market context. And actually, yes, the tool bag, as it were, what's in that toolkit may need to change a little bit. But the concept of the mix itself is, I think, a fairly robust concept. Whether we call it four Ps or whether it becomes an A, a D, a Z and a Y isn't really the issue. It's the idea of thinking about what it is that we need to remember, what it is that we need to do to make the business viable, to make, in essence, the business consumer worthy. But also remembering that while the philosophical perspective might be about an inside out version, or sorry, an outside in version, i.e. it's about looking externally, actually the business perspective as well is saying, well, do you know, we, we have certain skills, there are certain things that a business has to do. And sometimes that has to take precedence over what a consumer may want. Not least of all, maybe it'll be a legal dimension, or maybe a health and safety dimension. So what I would suggest is that you don't get lost in the rhetoric. Understand it, familiarise yourself with it, but don't get caught up in the rhetoric. That's there to help shape your understanding of marketing as a whole, and it should do. It's also there, I think, to help you understand what it is that you need to do as marketers and the world in which you work. But you still need to bear in mind that there is, in the marketing context, an output. There has to be something at the end of all of this. We can't just be reflective, ultimately. We must remember businesses are in the business of business. They're not in the business of philosophy. That's not why people invest in them. So, if we think, therefore, about this idea of the continuum, this is Einstein's continuum, and if we think, then, that the connection really is between the consumer and the action, the philosophy and the management, then I think the mix, whatever the components are, setting aside the four Ps, then I think the mix begins to make much more sound sense and you can move between these two states that the action info is informed by the consumer that the consumer is informed by the action and both of these things this constant to and fro in between these spaces as it were between these positions let's have a look at a brief example a fashion example and I've kept this very simple because again one of the things that struck me in reading this paper to remind myself of its content before doing this vidpod was that we often complicate the debate. We often complicate the discourse. And that's a luxury that we, in a university context, can have. But it's not necessarily a luxury that businesses have. And very often, the challenge for business, and I've said this many times, the challenge for business is to simplify rather than complicate. So I'm going to look at a Japanese company called Beams. If you haven't encountered Beams before, then it's worthwhile visiting it either physically if you can get to Japan or virtually online and have a look at what it does. It's an incredibly innovative retailer in terms of its alliances, in terms of the brands that it 
Selects. It's a, it's a very good brand editor and brand auditor, as it were. It's a very influential company as well for international brands trying to access Japan because it performs that role similar to Colette in Paris, similar to Corso Como in Milan, whereby if you're part, if you're part of the offer with Beams, then you are as a fashion brand endorsed because this is a respected auditor. Um, it's a respected collection ultimately. So it's an interesting, it's a very powerful company in that respect. But it can only be so by understanding its customers. But it's not just there for about reflecting its customers. What it's also doing is directing its customers. It's a combination between satisfying what they currently want and introducing them to the next thing, introducing them to the, no, the, the new, to the unknown and moving them forward and bringing new brands in, constantly shining. So we have, in essence, a retailer that is in a continual state of flux. And that's, to some extent, one of the secrets of its success. It's the constancy of change, constancy of change with respect to the brands, a huge amount of, sim um, of stability with respect to Beams as a brand, but the brands that Beams works with is in a constant state of flux. And if you go online, you can see an incredible array um, of companies, of fashion brands that it's connected with. How does it play out the mix then? How can we see the mix? The four Ps, let's keep it to the traditional. How can we see the four Ps as it were enacted in a company like Beams? And you can do this with any fashion company. Any fashion company. And you should do it with any fashion company because it actually helps us understand the companies better as well. So I think as observers, the marketing mix is quite useful on that basis. I'm not going to link up with each of these. You can do that in the privacy of your own home, as it were, or in your own time. But each of these links demonstrates, as it were, how the mix has been informed but also how the mix responds to changes in the world, changes in the environment, as it were. So if we think about new products for the new age, well, we are familiar with the debate about organics, about morality, about ethics. And whether there's an absolute evidence that this is a, a significant consumer trend or otherwise, it nevertheless is part of the current dynamic within the marketplace. So this link takes you to a range that Beams has introduced that reflects that. Now what it's not saying is that all of our products, all of our brands will sit in that ethical position as it were. It's simply saying that we are offering something to the consumer who may be interested it's not moving the whole brand, it's, i.e. it's not moving beams, lock, stock and barrel, to an ethical or to an organic standpoint, but it's reflecting the customer. In that sense, therefore, it's new products, but it's product focused, or it's a product solution to market focus. Likewise, if we look at new places, there are a number of demonstrations of that. You can look at Beams and its e-tailing activities. You can look at Beams and its international activities. And that comes back to that issue when I said, if we think about place as the meeting point for the business and the consumer, where the two parties come together and share and possibly transact. But that coming together, that sharing might not be transactional, it might be informational, it might be about 